What's going on smart people? Bringing you another episode of Tensor Calculus for Physics. In the last video we started taking derivatives of tensors and we saw that you can't just take the derivative of a tensor and expect the end result to still be a tensor. For example you'll get these second derivative terms which won't always be zero. We have the regular transformation rule plus this term that seems to spoil everything. For things like orthogonal transformations and really transformations that you're probably used to from undergraduate physics that term is probably zero and you do get the regular rules that say things like velocity is a vector. Go figure. But for more general cases, you can't make that assumption. To, uh, to better understand this whole phenomena, we did what anyone would do, and we jumped out of a plane with a book. And we described the four position of the book relative to us with this four coordinate big X alpha, and we took the second derivative with respect to proper time, which was zero. It shouldn't be accelerating relative to us. And we also had someone on the ground that was observing the same thing. And these two equations, these two equations that describe this coordinate and this coordinate, I guess the equations of motion, are connected by the affine connection whose coefficients are defined in the following way. If any of this seems new to you, I really advise you to go check out the previous video where we go through all of this in detail. Uh, because the entire topic of today's video is this guy right here, the affine connection coefficients. Um, so there's a link in the description. If you haven't seen that video already, go check it out and then come back to this one. Okay, but we got an object with three indices here. The topic of this video is to understand how it transforms. Is it a tensor? Or is it what people in the industry would call not a tensor? That's what we want to find out. Well, if we want to know if something is a tensor or not, we know how to do that. We just have to see how it transforms. We're going to go ahead and keep the x alpha the same, the person still jumping out of the plane, but we want to know how is the affine connection that connects the x alpha to, let's just say it's connected that way, uh, x mu, how are these related, the x alpha, some x prime mu. So say, instead of right below the thing that's falling, maybe it's down the road a little bit. We want to be able to compare these affine connections, and by understanding how they transform, we'll find out if it's a tensor or not. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, we don't need this equation anymore, so I'm going to erase this. But we do need this. So let's start out in some primed frame. So let's say we have uh, gamma, lambda prime, mu prime, nu prime. I don't want to write this a bunch of times, so this is going to be the same thing as prime, lambda, mu, nu, okay? And this is going to be equal to, so it's going to be a dx prime lambda, d big X alpha, d squared, x alpha, dx prime mu, dx prime nu. Great. So this is what we're going to, we want to relate these guys here. Now, the trick is always kind of the same for this. We have new variables that are functions of the old variables. So we have these x prime lambdas and we have our x alphas that are functions of our x mu. This is just screaming, chain rule me, Andrew Shama. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm saying here is we have some x, big X alpha is big X alpha as a function of, let's call it, I don't know, x sigma. And we have x prime um, mu is equal to x prime mu as a function of x, I don't know, let's call it rho. Okay. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is because we're taking derivatives of these variables, so we're going to have to use chain rule. So these are the, what they're functions of. Okay, so when we want to expand this using chain rule, this is just going to be equal to, so we've got a dx prime lambda d big x alpha. That's just going to be a dx prime lambda dx, what did I call it, x rho, dx rho d big x alpha, so that's our first term. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated because we have second derivatives. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out the first derivative. We'll deal with that right after we do the first one. So let's d dx prime mu. Okay, and then we have derivative of x alpha with respect to x prime nu. Okay, so that's going to be a derivative 
dx alpha dx rho dx sorry no this is uh, sigma the reason I'm using different variables here is not because they're different coordinates it's still the same set of coordinates but maybe I'm looking at different elements of that coordinate set so I don't want to reuse my variables over d x prime nu okay to make myself a little bit more room I'm going to erase this because now we have to use we have to actually take the derivative of this with respect to x prime mu and then actually since we probably should have what their functions of up here just to be clear um, I guess it doesn't really matter they're just functions of the old variables but you know just for the sake of completeness so when we do this let's go ahead and write this side I'm gonna have to write a little bit smaller so we've got a dx prime lambda dx rho dx rho d big x alpha and then here we're going to have to use product rule. Let's go ahead and take care of the harder one first. So we'll pull this guy out as a constant. So we've got a d x sigma d x prime nu. And then we're taking this derivative. So let's pull that guy out. So we've got a d over d x sigma of the derivative of x. So since we're taking the derivative with respect to the new coordinates, we need to use chain rule. Let's call that new variable just to not use the same one twice. Let's call it tau. You're a tau. So we'll do dx, uh, do big X alpha dx tau. And then chain rule says that this should be up top too. dx tau over dx prime mu. So that's this first part of, of the product rule here. Now we need to do the easier one, which is plus d big X alpha dx sigma. And then we're just taking the second derivative now. So it's d squared x sigma. Let's do uh, dx prime mu dx prime nu. Sorry if that's a little bit cut off. All this is doing here is product rule. Um, to make it a bit more clear, let's go ahead and split this into two terms and see how we can simplify everything. So I'll do this as term one, which is just going to be this part. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute this out. So this is dx prime lambda dx rho dx rho d big x alpha times this guy so we've got a d x sigma d x prime nu d squared big x alpha d x sigma d x tau and then we've got a d x tau dx prime mu. So this is the first term. <clears throat> and let's write this a little bit. Let's just gather our terms in a little bit different of a way. So we've got this d squared alpha, and then we've got a uh, the big one downstairs here. Let's, let's bring these guys together. So this is going to be a dx prime lambda dx rho uh, dx sigma Let's actually do this one first. dx tau, dx prime mu, dx sigma, dx prime nu. And then we've got dx rho, d big X alpha, d squared big X alpha, d x sigma dx tau. That looks disgusting, but we can actually simplify this a bit because this term here matches exactly, minus the naming of the, of the indices, with our definition of the affine connection coefficients. We've got our derivative of the ground with respect to the, the free-falling guy, second derivative of free-falling guy with respect to ground. That's exactly what we have here. So we can call this 
this is equal to, let's go ahead and just rewrite this again. It's very tricky to not write all this and solve it at the same time as speaking. Uh, so I hope I didn't make any mistakes with indices, but it happens. dx row, dx tau, dx prime mu, dx sigma, dx prime nu. And then this guy is just going to be a gamma. We've got a row up top, so gamma row. And then we're summing over alpha, so we don't write that. And then sigma and tau. So we've got a sigma and a tau. There we go. And if this was the end of the story, then we would have just proven that the affine connection coefficients do transform as third rank tensor components. But this was just term one. Right? This is the transformation rule for a third rank tensor. We have the unprimed and then the three transformation coefficients. But now we also have to deal with this guy here, the second term. So what I will do is I will erase this top part here and just plop this up there. That's term one. Now let's go ahead and do term two. So term two. So we're distributing this guy over here. So we've got a dx prime lambda dx rho dx rho d big x alpha times dx alpha dx sigma. That's big x. d big x alpha dx sigma. OK and then d squared x sigma dx prime mu dx prime nu. This is a little disgusting, the handwriting, sorry. That's a row. Anything else not look like what it's supposed to be? Please don't make fun of my mu's. I'm very self-conscious about my mu's. OK, so this is that second term distributed. If we look here, we've got a dx rho dx alpha dx alpha dx sigma, but that's just if we write that over here, dx rho d big x alpha d big x alpha dx sigma, that's just the Kronecker delta. That's just going to be a delta rho sigma. So we can erase that part here, or we can write it together. I don't care. dx prime lambda dx rho delta rho sigma, and then we've got a d squared x sigma dx prime mu dx prime nu. So this is just going to equal dx prime lambda dx rho d squared x sig d squared x rho dx prime mu dx prime nu. So that is term two. Let's go ahead and add that over here. Okay, d squared x rho dx prime mu dx prime nu. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. So we can rewrite all this as saying that our gamma uh, prime lambda mu nu is equal to this here. So we have the what would be the transformation rule if it was a third rank tensor, plus, again, the second derivative term, which seems to spoil everything. But there actually is kind of a glimmer of hope in all of this because we've got this second derivative term that ruins everything. When we took derivatives in the last video, it was a second derivative term that ruined everything. So maybe what we could do is we could modify what we mean by, de by the derivative. We could extend our definition of the derivative to contain something like this gamma term such that the second derivative terms that spoil everything cancel and we end up we're guaranteed to end up with a tensor that's going to be the idea when we get into the covariant derivative which is the topic of the next video um, 
But for now, if we look at what happened when we took derivatives, we had derivatives of the primed with respect to the unprimed. And here we have derivatives of the unprimed with respect to the primed. So in anticipation for that, let's write this in a little bit different of a way by noting that dx prime lambda dx rho dx rho dx prime nu, that's just going to give us a Kronecker delta lambda nu. And let's go ahead and take the derivative of this whole expression with respect to uh, x mu prime. So if we do d over dx prime mu of dx prime lambda dx rho dx rho dx prime nu, that should be 0. The derivative of the Kronecker delta will give us 0. And then we're just going to have to go ahead and use product rule and chain rule, which we've done a million times already. So we take the derivative of this, so we have, let's go ahead and do, let's do the easy one first. So we've got a dx prime lambda dx rho d squared x rho dx prime mu dx prime nu. Okay. Uh, let's make that a little bit nicer. d squared, sorry, d squared x rho plus, now we just have to use uh, the chain rule, here, chain rule here, so it's going to be plus a d squared x prime lambda uh, dx, what do I want to call it, dx rho dx sigma will be my new variable, and then a dx sigma dx prime mu. Does that make sense? And then all this should be time the, times the part that we kept as a constant, dx rho dx prime nu. OK? Now this might seem pretty complicated, and why am I doing this? But if we look back up at our transformation rule for the affine connection coefficients, we see that we have right here, we have a d squared, where are you? d squared rho dx prime mu dx prime nu times a dx prime lambda dx rho. And this is equal to 0. And here we have derivatives of the primed with respect to the unprimed. So instead of having unprimed with respect to primed, we can write gamma prime lambda mu nu equal to dx prime dx rho dx tau dx prime mu dx sigma dx prime nu so that should be a nu gamma rho sigma tau minus because we're setting these are just uh, equal to up to a minus sign so minus d squared x prime lambda dx rho dx sigma dx sigma dx prime mu dx rho dx prime nu. So this is an alternative, alternative way of writing the transformation rule for the affine connection coefficients. And I think that this just looks nicer and more related to this term up here where we have primed with respect to unprimed primed with respect to unprimed. So in the next video when we start talking about the covariant derivative, we'll see how we can tie it all together and make sure that when we take derivatives of tensors, we still get tensors at the end. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I will see you guys there.